How are you, precious? I'm actually good. I'm actually really, really good. Oh, that's that is absolutely fantastic to hear. Every time, every time I see you, you are such a bundle of energy and joy <laughs> and praise to other women and praise to what you're doing and stuff. So this is awesome. I thank you so much for joining us um, because I felt as though it was important for you to share your story and your journey with so many other inspiring women. So it only made sense for you to accept, you know? <laughs> so it explains why you accept it to the audience. Um, but this is all about you. I know that you don't need our platform to advance your brand anymore. But the program we're doing, as many of our viewers and readers know, is that this is our way of giving back to the community. So whether it benefits you or whether it benefits someone who hears about you, it's, a, it's definitely providing the support that we want for our mission. So let's get well, let me just say it. this. It's it's not about big, small, like that's listen, that's not me. That's not me. <laughs> I remember when I started how people uh -huh. didn't want to work with me and everything. And I was like, okay. Yeah. It's only yeah. a matter, as Jay-Z said, it's only a matter of years. You that's see right. me again. And when you see me this time, you won't deny me. So I don't oh, look at yes, girlfriend. Yes. I don't and look I, at people like that. Because that it's like, what I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I want to hear what you were going to say. It's kind of like what, you know, you see uh, uh, an artist like Drake, the number one artist in the world. Uh-huh. He works with some of the newer artists. He works with established artists. Like, yep. first of all, you got to stay relevant. So it's, I don't look at people like, mm, platform ain't big enough for me. I don't look at it like that. I really, yeah. really don't. I'm like, I remember. Humbleness. It. It's humbleness. Because right. I'm going to be honest with you. I look at it and, and call me selfish, call me vindictive or whatever you want to say, but I look at it as sweet revenge. If I'm not good enough for you today, come tomorrow, you're going to wish you had, you know, worked with me. You're going to wish you had given me an opportunity and come the week after that, I now have the option to pick and choose who I choose to work with. And if you decide to come back and, and, and revisit the opportunity that was in front of you a couple of days ago, then guess what? I'm gonna decide, do I really wanna go down this? Some people look at that, you might be biting your nose to spite yourself. I don't know, maybe I am, maybe I'm not because we all do business with people that we like, trust, and um oh. and we know mm -hmm. so i already know who you yeah, are now I if totally... i wasn't good enough for you yesterday what makes you think i'm good enough for you today well you know what it's also like one of the things that happened to me it was a lot of the you know i went through a lot in the last what four or five years mm -hmm. and to have some of the biggest speakers in the world just straight diss me and, oh you know you fell off da 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 and then when they see me getting the speaking engagements and corporate trainings at Microsoft, the LinkedIn's, the Google's, the NBC right. Universal's, the Federal Reserve Bank's, they're like, and the list that's goes not on. supposed to happen. And I'm like, oh, but it is. Because yes. you said no, you forced me to get real creative. So yes. in, in a way, I actually thank you. And so now you would think that it's November and December. I'm approached so often. And I think what people forget is, I can't say yes to everything because I will never sleep. Absolutely. I will Absolutely. never sleep. And I and I also have clients. I have individual clients and I have corporate clients. Right. So they deserve their time too. So Absolutely. I make sure to just say, hey, if I'm gonna say no, just know it's not, it's not what you think it is. It truly right. is. I don't have that kind of time now. And Absolutely. so you I'm, said I'm, no to me just recently. Yeah. But, here's I'm the saying, funny I'm, but I'm here right now, right? Yes, you are. And the funny thing is, is that you originally said, hey, this sounds interesting. I want to learn more. But I understand about time management. I understand not spreading yourself too thin. I run several, several businesses. I just launched. I know you my do, Queen. <laughs> I have three businesses. I just launched my speaking gigs and stuff. And there's a lot going on. And my time is precious, just like the next person. So I get it. I understand it. We can't get wrapped up into our feelings. 
We can't get wrapped up into our egos. Sometimes we have this, this attitude of entitlement. Well, how dare they say no to me? Yes, it's not because, it's not always because we're small and that person thinks we're not big enough. It's not always the case. It sometimes are, is deeper than that. There are legitimate reasons behind it, but you've always been consistent with me. When we, uh, before we officially met for the first time, and even after we had soft introductions of, of each other, you've always been consistent with how you behave towards me. So I had no other choice but to say, it's gotta be a logical explanation. Not everybody's gonna be able or want to jump on whatever I'm doing. And that's okay, that's okay. But no, girlfriend, let me tell you something. Let's talk about how you got to where you at, what you doing today. Could you Girl, share some right. information on LinkedIn? And you, um, you've got so much going on. And that's Girl, right. you ain't never lied. You ain't never ever lied. Sorry, I had to stand up real quick. But uh -huh. yes, I'm but telling you. you. Have, well, let me share this with people, okay? Real quick. Yes. Now I, I don't have a sister ain't wearing her glasses right now because she's trying Girl, to. Be cute. Listen, I ain't wearing mine. <laughs> This is what the show, Bad Bitches and Power Bitches. That's right, because I'm so I, love, I love that. But listen, everyone, this is what we're dealing with today. We've got the notorious Precious Williams with us who wrote the book, Bad Bitches and Powerful Pitches. It kind of rhymes there. I like that. Girl, she you has know how your girl is. Come on. One. Uh, girlfriend let me tell you something this is awesome it's like you got the number one killer pitch master present you know it's awesome 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 stuff so why don't you share um your inspiring story leading up to your most recent accomplishments because i know about some of them <laughs> so everyone i'm from the inner city of st louis missouri I grew up with parents who did not want me. And, oh. you know, I think very few people will ever feel, know what that feels like. So you're constantly feeling like you have to prove yourself to people who honestly don't care. Yeah. And so uh, my, my mother used to abuse me and nearly beat me to death on November 18th, 1991. I'm still here. Wow. I was sitting to go live with my father who uh, was and still is a drug addict. Mm. and you know I just kind of gave up on life I was one of those kids that you could just look at and see the light dimming in their eyes and when I was 15 years old my grandparents stepped in to ask my father to let them raise me and I didn't want to go because I was like man yo um, let me tell you there are some decisions I'm glad I never made wow. and so when I walked into my grandparents house and they lived in the inner city of St. Louis Missouri like in the hood ghetto but they you know had a house full of love and when I walked in my grandmother was like she just treated me like a princess. For oh. the first time in my life, I had my toes twinkled in the morning to wake me up. My bath water was drawn. Um, we sat down as a family for breakfast mm. and I had a hot breakfast. My clothes were ironed and I was driven to school as if I was in Beverly Hills. I was driven to school by my grandmother. That was and your I was made Hill. to do... Mm -hmm. And I was made and I was made to do affirmations every morning and every night with her in the mirror. She wanted me to know I was the goat, the greatest of all time. She told me I was a great speaker. She told me that I was going to meet Oprah. She told me I'd have my own talk show. She said a lot of things that I'm still like. She go, who? She's bringing that in, in existence for you. Oh, she, she, she definitely you know what spoke. it is. You speak it, it will happen. You speak she was it, right. you believe it. It will happen. She was right. And so at 16 years old, my the principal of my high school came to me and said, hey, I would like you to speak at an event. Now, you know, when you see, listen, I was 16. Let me just go back and just say that. I was 16. I didn't realize it was before the mayor of the city of St. Louis. And I killed it. My wow. English teacher, Miss Addie B. Jackson, she wrote my speech. I had never practiced it beforehand, but I just went in. And it's just weird. It's, it's kind of like my brain is so weird. I just yeah, know what right. to say and how to say it. I just know, right? And so I'm giving this speech and, you know, I couldn't be scared. I 
I'm 16. Like, I just want to get some good food, couple of couple queens. I don't care. That's how silly at 16 I was, right? Oh my god. I goodness. did so well that my next speaking gig was before the governor of Missouri. What? So mind you, I'm that inner city ghetto girl. And I'm speaking to the mayor of the city of St. Louis, who put me on his mm-hmm. his educational task force. Wow. And then the governor. So I always felt like, dang, I had a Barack Obama moment, but I was too young to truly appreciate it. And so, you know, I was our first, I was our, the first person in my family. I graduated valedictorian. I was the queen of my high school for an entire year. I had a parade in the city of St. Louis when I was, when I was named Miss Beaumont, 1996, 1997. And that's wow. pretty good coming from someone who's, whose mom always told him you'd never, I would never. I would never be pretty. I would never be this. I would never be that. Wow. And to imagine I had a parade in the city of St. Louis. I was in wow. a lot of things. So anyway, I was in the St. Louis Post Dispatch a lot. I was on television a lot. And, you know, I look back and I'm like, dang, I couldn't even appreciate it because I was so young, right? I went off to Spelman College on a full ride, graduated in four wow. years, uh, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. I was blessed to become a member of Delta Sigma with Theta Sorority Incorporated, eight to Kappa chapter. So I'm the wow. 33 of our line, Divine 35. Went off to Georgetown University Law Center, full wow. scholarship. I got kicked out in 2002, but we'll, we'll put that to it. We'll, We'll talk about that a different day. You know, I got kicked out <laughs> and I thought my life was over because if you can't be a Hoya lawyer, dang, it's a rough life. Yeah. Um, but when you know the right people, I promise mm-hmm. you things that, that, that would affect a lot of people differently. Like I had a, one of my mentors at Sullivan and Cromwell, one of the top firms in the world. He was uh-huh. like, listen, go over to Rutgers. I went over to Rutgers, talked to the Dean and they were like, okay, so we'll offer you a full scholarship. <laughs> Oh God. You're just getting these educations are just handed over to you. A sister worked four jobs she at goes, one what? time to pay for mine. She you goes, gotta what? just lay she, it all just, out. Just, just dropping it like it's hot, right? So I got yeah. it. so Georgetown was gonna let me back in, but they're gonna make me do part time. Right. Be, but you know, Georgetown is expensive. Let's, let's be clear. Yes. And I decided, you know what? Full scholarship sounds good to me. So I went to Rutgers. Um First year, you know, I had a nervous breakdown in 2004. Girl, so much that happened. But I will tell you this. Rutgers is so good because one of the deans came to my my um, hospital hospital bed. And I was in psych ward for three months. I had a nervous oh. breakdown. Oh, you really had said, a nervous breakdown? Yeah, I did. And she oh, said, wow. she said, you will finish this. And I was like, and you know, my auntie, my great auntie Jackie, she called Rutgers. She was like, um, so my niece is in the hospital. I'm gonna need y'all to go and see her before I come see y'all. They don't want none of my aunt. I promise you, I don't even want none of my aunt. So they came. And and just like that, I made it all the way through. I became um, the number one student attorney in my last semester. Wow. And I graduated. And I will always thank Rutgers for that. So Mm. then, you know, I I worked in medical malpractice, products liability, toxic torts, real estate, criminal. I have to tell you, I hated it. Like after a while, Mm. like I'm a litigator and I love to, I love to argue in court, not just on, not BS arguments. That's not me. Like, so after a while, I was like, I got to do this for 40 years. Mm, Nah, Mm. not precious. I was like, I got to do something else. And I always thought I was built differently and born differently because I was like, most people say, you know, lawyer, stay doing that. And I'm like, mm, if this is the best it's gonna be, I'm good. You got an education, somebody paid for it. Mm, I'm good. So in 2010, I was dating, um, uh, not dating, I had a, I had a fiance mm. and we wound up breaking up. So I put a little ad on a dating website, which I will never say because it makes me look bad. <laughs> but <laughs> I met a very <laughs> famous Hollywood actor. All right, I'll tell you, it was Craigslist. But just imagine, it was 2010. It was 2010, y'all. It was 2010. <laughs> Don't be trying to make it up to 2020. It was hey, 2010. Did, what's, the, what's the other ones? Uh, Match.com. I did several of them. Um, and there's yeah, one well, see, that Match. I don't want to make have you a look. certain look to them. When you think of Craigslist, people be like, and I did, a, I did a thing called Two to Tango. It was all about dancing the night away. It was very, very cute, right? Uh-huh. I met a very famous Hollywood actor. And to Ooh. this day, I'm still stunned. What would a dude like that be doing on there? Get we went on our first date. I, I can't tell you. He's deceased now, but he, you oh. know, he's deceased. Um, 
But I remember when I first met him, I didn't look anything like I look today. Like I was so plain Jane. I was worth flat. Da, da. This man had me. Listen, what are heels at? What a, like, 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 listen, I need to get my, I need to step my game up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I thought that if we ever got intimate, you know, cause I wasn't sure I was a big girl, you know, a bigger, I, like I was 327 pounds. And so oh. <laughs> I couldn't find anything in my size. So then I thought about it and said, why don't I start a lingerie company for curvy women? And I called the curvy girls lingerie. Uh -huh. I had no money to get started. Cause I quit all my, I quit all my legal positions. I would go to one and be like, be there for three days. And be like, yeah, I don't want this. <laughs> like, I just did. I was ridiculous. So I went to start Curvy Girls Lingerie. Had no money to get started. Had negative four hundred dollars in my bank account. Was too afraid to ask him for money because you know I got to look like I'm on my grind, on my grizzly grind. Right. And so I met a woman who said she she pitched and she won fifty thousand dollars. I listened to her pitch and I was like, you are high. I can smoke you. So then I entered myself into a pitch competition, and then I went to an event with the producers of MSNBC and I just pitched not knowing how to do it but I just pitched next thing I knew I was on MSNBC's Your Business with JJ Ramberg wow. I was pitching for money got a $500,000 check they told me enter more competitions and out of 14 competitions I came out on top 13 times so you in total I raised $650,000 I did Shark Tank in 2016 but this all started in 2011 2012 2013 so I'm 13 time champion in three it, from 2011 to 2013 then I started perfect pitches by precious because people were always enamored with me on stage like oh my god she's just different she's she's bomb and right. so that led to the shark tank that led to CNN Wall Street Journal Forbes magazine um and that led to me being in movies and documentaries and, and flying all over the world being an international speaker that wow. led to opportunities to move with the movers and shakers in Milan Italy I'm telling you my story doesn't even make I sense have, like, I, if I, I didn't at it, know I'm, all of this yeah I'm telling you, my story does not make sense it's like how does it and I didn't do it the entertainment way you know what I mean like right. like I don't come from that background I literally spoke my way into my first, uh, my first film role, spoke it, you know, like literally living in Santa Monica and filming in a glass mansion in Malibu, having drones on set, eating the best food, flying out to Milan, Italy, flying out here and there and just being like, no one could have prepared me for this life, but my grandmother knew. She may not know how it would have come through. So I am called the killer pitch master by Robert Townsend, the director of five, the five heartbeats. I know, you know, yeah. MC yeah. like they called when I won the black enterprise elevator pitch competition in 2000, May 16th, 2013, they were like, you are the killer pitch master. Wow. And they were like, you slay all competition. Like you did that so effortlessly in 54 seconds, you won this competition. It wow. took 54 seconds for you to win a competition. And then they were like, your second pitch was 22.5 seconds. So that's how it all started. And then, you know, last year, I was last year I was 40. And I was talking to one of my one of my friends who wrote who wrote who wrote about me in CNN in 2015. That was CNN's June 2015 Entrepreneur of the Month. Right. So I was talking on the phone in 2019. She's like, yo, where's that book at? <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna need you to get it together. So I told her, I, I wrote an outline. And she, her name is Sharon Monet. Uh -huh. And she said, so she looked at the outline. She said, mm, <laughs> no wonder you can't write your book. She <laughs> said, you're such a speaker. You're not a writer. She said, you're such a speaker. So she became a book coach. And then I told her the title was Bad Bitches and Power Pitches. She said, righteous and some people were like no 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 for three years I had that in my mind people kept saying no it's not the, no it's a bad title no one could have prepared me that the day it debuted that it would be number one no like you would think oh you would know that I did wait a minute precious let me ask you this question if you had a couple of naysays on the title what made you decide to stick with it I was about to say something, but I had to remember where I was. <laughs> okay, so so it wasn't a couple of naysayers. It was a lot of women. It was a lot of women who told me. There's a lot of women no. that don't like that B word. Right. It's a lot but of women. It, it all depends on how it's being used. Right. But, you know, again, in, in our community, there is a such thing as respectability politics. Mm -hmm. And listen, I didn't come out of a respectable place. And I'm not saying I'm not respectable. What I'm saying is you are. that there should be opportunities for the full spectrum of women. 
right? Yeah. And so when I won Black Enterprise all backstage, people kept calling me. That's a bad bitch, right? That's a bad bitch. That's a bad bitch. Mm-hmm. And it always stuck with me. And I was like, yo, if I ever write a book, I want to be bad bitches and power bitches. So when speaking to Sharon, she said, who are you writing a book for? Is it for everyone or is it a particular, particular type of woman? And I said, yes, I'm writing this for the unapologetic women. The women who've been told there's an expiration date on them past 30. The women who are ready to launch something that is going mm-hmm. to transform the world. The women who are of a certain age and they are tired of fitting into a box and she said then I don't care who tells you they're not your customer and you have to remember that so when so putting it out there and of course you know they say it's we're coming I've had one of the top speakers in the world one of the top three speakers in the world call me and say change the title I can get it sold to the government and I cried call Sharon Sharon's like it ain't for him so I'm gonna need you to okay so came out on October 28th 2019 I'm so scared I didn't get up I didn't do anything my um my other coach calls me mother business coach she's Ty calls she said girl your book is number one I was like what she said yeah she said it's number one and I was like oh my god I went to look and I was like oh my god she said you can't let people dictate your right. vision and the path that God has you on. So at the end of the day, when it debuted and it and it stayed there for two weeks, I was like, oh my God. So then um it just it just led me to say, you know what? God placed a vision on me, not everybody else. So not everybody else has to factor into it. Am I sad that I named this book this? Not at all. In fact, it caused people to be like, I'm curious. People who would normally not be, just I'm curious. And the people who kept saying they wouldn't buy it secretly bought it and were like, wow, we were actually shocked. We thought it would be one way and it's not. So I'm very grateful. And then this year, my workbook came out you know, which which helps you totally write your your pitches, right? right? So this is all about the branding, your branding persona as a pitcher. Are you unstoppable? Are you powerful? Are you creative? Are you mysterious? Are you all, right. like, there's only seven. And then right. this, this is what you use to actually craft it. And that was and number that's one. part, Precious, because you're only one person. We talked about this in the very beginning of the interview. You can't be, you can't have everybody as your client. You can't be everything to everyone. You so can't true. be at everybody's event as a speaker. So you got the tools that yes. you can give them to try to yep. figure it out themselves until you have that time freed up for you to be there for them. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So this was important. And then, you know, as you know, um, this a few days ago, my book was a finalist for the um, the sale business sales and economic book of the year. So there was a winner and I was in the top five. So I'm very excited that my book is a year old and it's still winning awards. Wow. And so my third book is coming out in April, 2021 and it's called Pitching for Profit, The Bad Bitches Playbook. So think about it being like, if you ever watch sports, every every one of the teams has a coach yeah so what do you do as an athlete you run the play so if you know if you can kind of figure out what the other side is doing you know how to run your play and how to totally go over so I'm going to teach you in pitching not you've already learned how you know what the pitch you sound like now I'm going to teach you how do you get referrals how do you get affiliates how do you get your name spoken in rooms that you'll never you'll never enter how do you get people to be how do you get your network to monetize you How do you do that? Right. And so how do you get like, again, the only reason I get into these big companies is because there's always someone there who has never heard of me before, who comes Mm -hmm. to something I've done and just like, we want her. So whereas whereas other people have to put together these long proposals and stuff. I've never had to do that ever. Mm -hmm. I just come right through the front door. And that's why I say to you, always show up ready. Right. Don't show up. I don't care. Like, listen, I haven't been feeling well for and, and you know not, not not like COVID nothing like that whatever like right. but my body was t- my body is tired and yeah. so think about that they don't need to know that they just need to know show up and that's kill it, it. That's and it. I want to show other women listen I don't care how you feel unless you, like listen if you have COVID stop right but these people need a show and I need you to show up like you mean it because you never know who's listening 
that oh you never know and never I'm know honest with you people are watching you even the silent ones they're watching you for a while because you you heard of that book about the um the four colors of personalities right yes so that book right there tells you about the different characteristics of these personalities and how some people are quick to jump on opportunities when they see a good deal or a good opportunity or a, a true talent, they jump on it and grab it right away. Others may identify you as a great source and a great talent, but it takes them a little bit longer to want to engage with you. And that's okay too. Needless to say, they still get to the same point, and that is hiring you, engaging with you, and entertaining you. But the thing is, is that those people that take longer to act on it, those are the ones that are watching you. They're watching your every move. They're watching what you do on social media. They watch what you're doing on your website. They watch what everything that you're doing. So that's why it's important for us to promote, promote, promote advertise, talk about what we're doing, talk about our accomplishments. There's a fine line between um, sharing valuable information and being obnoxious and, and conceited, you know? And that's not what we're doing. We're letting people, making them aware of our accomplishment because we're sharing our portfolio. It's our way of sharing our portfolio and sharing um, our qualification for us to be considered for whatever it is that we do and stuff and you don't know how many in fact you had LinkedIn watching you for a while you and I sat on uh, the same panelist for a summit that we did. Was a couple of months ago and when you you were like yeah LinkedIn reached out to me and said hey would you like to be involved in something and I was like go ahead girl I was like that's a bad bitch so <laughs> <laughs> Yep, I'm a LinkedIn content creator. You know, it's funny, you, you said you're watching. so right. Yeah, you got people watching and you never know who's watching you. And they're watching your every move. Sometimes they're looking for consistency. Sometimes they're looking for new and hot things. Because like you said earlier, it's important for us to always keep, make uh, to make ourselves relevant at all times. So therefore we have to keep reinventing ourselves but staying within the guidelines of our expertise. That's you a better, misconception. A lot girl, of people like the tea. different Did that you hear that T? Did you hear that T? What's your zone of genius? That's Stay in right. your lane. This one people ask me to do. Lane. People will ask me to, like, like, listen, there's certain spaces I cannot enter because I don't have the zone of genius for it. I'm yeah. into pitching, communication skill, some parts of branding public speaking, professional speaking. That's it. I yes. only handle communication. Yes. I am not a designer. I cannot speak in, like, I have friends that speak on leadership, mm -hmm. executive presence. I can speak on executive presence to a certain extent. But listen, I will form it's that to the head. homies. That is yeah. not my thing. And I'll make sure, like, a, a big magazine just reached out to me. And they mm -hmm. were asking me, you know, could I speak in the DEI space? Now, some people would have been like, just get, let me get in the magazine. And I was like, I can do the other two. The third one, let me just keep it a buck with y'all. That's not my, I, I have I have demonstrated how to move in DEI, but it's not my zone. And I said, mm -hmm. I just need to put that out there. I said, because I would hate to get there. And y'all like expecting this and I can't deliver because it's not <laughs> and my zone. Like, oh, and they were like, wow, you thought. really said that. I said, <laughs> I said it because I do not ever want to be in a position where I lose an opportunity that I mm -hmm. got through trickery and falsehoods. And Thank now you. you'll block me from other opportunities. So let me Thank just come you. in and tell y'all I can't. Another thing that you, another thing that, you know, that we, we are really discussing is, you know, there are a lot of people who are always gonna say, all you do is brag, right? So people will never say that to my face. They'll be like, oh, you, you know, but I can feel the energy when they meet me. And it's like, hmm. So when I was homeless, you didn't hear from me. Mm -hmm. When I had a severe alcohol addiction, you didn't hear from me. Mm -hmm. When I almost took my life almost four years ago, you didn't hear from me. Mm -hmm. You've only heard of me in the last two years when mm -hmm. I walked out of homelessness. Mm -hmm. And I don't brag. I'm showing you what God can do with someone that people dissed and turned their backs on. Yeah. So the next time you want to diss people, the next time you want to 
disparage them and you don't know them, remember, you don't know the story. Yeah. I may be in my winning season, but you never heard of the losing season. That's right. And so it ain't bragging if the glory is to God. It ain't me. It's what he has done. If he took me out of uh, if he took me out of homeless shelters, he took me out of eating out of garbage cans, if he took me out of riding the subways just to have a place to sleep at night, yeah, we can really get on to what homelessness really looks like, you know? And if he removed me from ever needing alcohol again, because the love of my life died, the very same actor we're talking about, yeah, he died. And that was a blow to me. And it was a blow for years. And I took to drinking to be able to cope until it became too much. And so I haven't had a drink since January 22nd, 2017. We're coming up almost on four years. So I'm very proud of those accomplishments. As much as people like, you know, that I've been in all these top things, I'm more proud that I'm clean and sober. Mm. I'm proud of the fact that in the midst of a pandemic, I moved into a two bedroom apartment in Brooklyn, New York. I'm more proud of the fact that all the people who said I couldn't do it, I did it. And I'm not going to dish you as I climb the mountain again. I will never dish you. I'm like, I understand. I understand. I understand why you were the way you were. And I'm just showing you that the person you made this, you may see again. And unlike them, I'm not going, I'm never going to bless you. I don't need to do that. You, you don't have to, to and I'm going to tell you why, to. Precious. You don't have mm-hmm. to, because in, in fact, I don't want to say you want to welcome it, but you should embrace it because it's only going to make you stronger and bigger. You Every better believe it. someone tries to tell you what you can't do, because that's, that's your whole life. You just shared yes. it with That's your whole life. Every time someone tell you what you can and what you're not and, and what you are, whether it's true or not, you have the ability to use that as fuel to keep on going. Be that rocket. You know, we say rock star, but be that rocket and soar into the air with your success. Because I'm going to tell you something else. It may not be for them to hear your successes and to see your, your, your resume of success. But it is for so many others. And you're not alone. Exactly. Um, I am a huge follower for Gary V. I always say Gary V because I don't try to say his last name is blah, 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 something. But you know who I'm talking about? He's yeah, really Gary big. On, yeah. He's really big in posting on um, LinkedIn. And I recycle a lot of his postings. And there was one incident where he posted something similar to what you just shared how people tear him down. They try to, as big as he is, he's gigantic. And people want to say, why are you always bragging? The same thing you, you, the vibe that you're getting from others, but they actually come out and say it to him. I feel like you're bragging all the time and you're throwing this out there and all this. I turned around, little old me, whether he saw it or not, or whether his marketing team has read it. I put in there and I said, you keep on doing what you're doing because some of us need to hear it. Some of us see it as an inspiration. Some of us see it as an encouragement to keep on moving along and being able to advance ourselves. If those naysayers and those Debbie Downers or wet towels are having an issue with you presenting your accomplishment as a force of, uh, of encouragement to others, then it's not for them. That message is not meant for them. And all they got to do is not read it or not hear it. Stop following you. <laughs> Simple as that. Stop following. Don't follow me. You have choices in this world. You either like what I say or you don't like what I say. And if I'm not your cup of tea, then stop paying attention to everything I do. <laughs> with that but no you keep on going girlfriend I give kudos to you let me check out time I give kudos to you God bless you I bless you in name of God for continuous success and more <laughs> things to come your journey does not stop here at all by a long shot folks I just want to say now we normally end off with a fun fact question and I'm going to give that to you Okay. Um, and then we're going to wrap this up. 
And before we wrap this up, I want to give everybody a friendly reminder about your book, at least the one book. And then also um, we'll wrap up more information on your other books in the Q&A section. All right. So here's your fun fact question. You have gone through a whole lot just from the story that you shared with me today and the rest of us. Who was your inspiration that kept you going? Two people. Okay. My grandmother, Precious Dolores Williams, mm. who saw in, who saw, who didn't see me as a child that no one wanted. She saw me as a child she always wanted and she bid her time mm. until I was 15. She couldn't take it anymore. Mm. And because she believed in me when no one else did, because she groomed me, because she prepared me, because she loved me, because she showed up at everything that I did and even things that I didn't want to show up at, mm. I did. This is the same woman who wouldn't let me do sleepovers, the same woman who wouldn't let me go to parties. If we were ever going to do anything, they had to come over to our house because my grandparents had to bet down because mm. their granddaughter can't just be out in the street. She can't just wind up pregnant. She can't just, oh no. So I'm so thankful to my grandmother for seeing me before anyone else did. And so I owe everything to God and to her. Yeah. Second, Michael Jackson. I know to some people he's controversial. To me, he is the excellence of execution. Yeah. For him to affect so many people with, with words and song and dance and to do it at a level that we have never seen before. How you? How do people pass out and you haven't entered the, the stage yet? Yeah. How do you do the moonwalk, the glove? Like, how do you? How do you bring? How do you constantly bring forth new ideas, new ways of looking at things, and everything? How do you do that when the world is coming up against you? When people are saying, um, you know, you're just a black person, and you're like, I transcend race. I transcend gender. I am art. Mm. I'm so thankful to him because he's a soundtrack to my life. And there's a gospel song he, he sang. Only Most people have never heard the song, but it's called Keep the Faith. Mm. And it's such a beautiful song. I think it's off the, the uh, Dangerous album. No one talks about it, but keeping the faith no matter what, that the vision that God placed in you. Right. So many people are going to come at you. Keep the faith. You will win the end. Promise. Wow. Thank you so much for that. I just want to share again your first book. Yes. Uh, Bad Bitches and Powerful Pitches. If yes. you don't have this book, get this book. If you don't have her work, uh, work what is it, the, the, the workbook? Yes. Or putting your own pictures together, get it. All information will be provided to you in the written format. Um, go to it and, and grab your copy today. I'm getting it. I'm being honest with you. I don't have a copy of either one, but I will be having a copy. That's my Christmas gift to myself. Um, precious, thank you so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And may you have a great continue of the rest of the year and a bang in 21, 22, 23, 25, and so on in your career. 